I want to kind of go into the origin um, of like what you've what you've done in the past. Some people don't know, you know, and I'm going to ask you straight up. I've never asked you this straight up before. Um, was Wild and Out stolen from you? Yes. Yes, it was stolen from a group, and you can Google. This is all Googleable. Uh, the we were called the other level. Uh, it was myself, Joe Blunt, Howie Bell, and Thomas Ward, and Tony Roberts would come in and out because he was a working comic at the time, so he he didn't have the time to commit to us to stay there to make it. Uh, we did. Uh, what was that called? The Aspen HBO Aspen Comedy Festival in 2000. Mm. So remember, Wild and Out didn't come out to 2005. Okay. So we already had a deal for that show. We are we then they pushed us to Motown Live, which was a show that was shot in LA. Montel Jordan was the host. You know, they put us on that show right. just to hold, right. you know, just to give us a little work. So it's things that I could point out in history that will let you see for yourself that, oh, yeah, they was kind of doing this before that. So right. Nick got the deal and, and just hired me. So I have four, three, three to four other guys that I always had to report to. And I had to let them stay with me because we in L.A. and we all homeless. So I'm the only one with money. So that's why I, the experience of it, I didn't really care because I felt like I never got a chance to like do it myself. It was always somebody I had to do something for. Oh, you hungry? Or you need this? Or you need that? Or you need? Mm. I'm working for like grown people, and it's not their fault. It's the industry. Like it's the it, that taught me that no matter who made what up, if a month wanted, they just gonna steal it for sure. Now, you, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run it back just so I can clearly understand what you put down. There was a comedy group that you were part of, and you guys were doing a um, somewhat a variation of what we now know as Wildin' Out, like sketches, improv, rap. Yeah, we rapped, the we whole did sketches now. and stand up in the middle. Okay, uh, it was exactly like Wildin' Out. Here's another thing, here's, and I don't want to jump too far, but here's another mm -hmm. uh, very good point. When I quit Wildin' Out, mm -hmm. I complained to Nick and said, "Listen." If I'm not going to be on this show, you can't do the show that I brought to you. You got to mm. change this show some kind of way. Mm. All then conceded came. Okay. Then Hitman Holla came. Gotcha. Then Justina, Justina and Valentine. So they had to change it to a rap show because it wasn't. And then here's another fun fact I brought Smack from Smack DVD. To Wildin' Out. I invited him to Wildin' Out. So he met Nick, and that was the connection. See, I was making the connections even when I was trying to leave. I was because I was the only quote unquote street guy, or 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 let's just a better way to say that is I grew up in New York. So when we was filming mm -hmm. in New York, my whole family was there. My grandmother sat next to Nick Cannon mom. So you know what I'm saying? So it's like they 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 was trying to like they thought that I was running it in LA, but when they when we went to New York, I ran it even harder because I was I grew up there. So they they could they were trying to find ways to just cut me out. Like after right. a while, they okay, so Emmanuel, because I, I and I'm saying Emmanuel because this actually happened. Mm -hmm. Uh his first time ever, he was scared. He was kind of nervous because we were all like rock stars and he was just like a new guy. So he right. wrote this big ass paragraph to diss me. Right. So he did this big ass paragraph and whatever I said, they didn't show it. They just showed me walking away from him. Then the next episode, they show somebody getting at me and then they would show me walking away. Like they stopped letting me talk. They stopped letting me rebuttal. So that was one of the first things I was really angry about. Because I was like, how are you gonna let these new mother dog the man? They gotta make the new, yeah, they gotta make the new people look like the man and phase you out. Now, I had asked originally, just to make sure I'm following the timeline, the comedy group, you have the comedy group, you guys are doing a variation or exactly like Wild and Out was known to become. In that you get a deal 
the deal then kind of holds your group group kind of like onto the side. Nick Cannon then gets a deal with, I'm guessing now MTV or Viacom of some sort. And then he, then what happens is he coming to you and saying, hey, I like what y'all are doing, but I can just bring you into this. Okay, so let me paint the picture for you. Uh, we both had a deal with Will Smith over Brooks, uh, over book production. Uh, our deal fell out. Nick deals fell out. Nick had a personal relationship with Will. So that's what kept him around. So either Will said, hey, you should take their idea. Or Nick said, I'm going to do the idea, but I'm just going to take him. Mm -hmm. So he was filming uh, Roll Bounce in Chicago. And I had just be, happened to be in Detroit. So he flies me to Chicago and shows me this blueprint of things. And I'm like, uh, that's what we do. And he was like, yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about. So look, we're going to do the show that y'all do, but me and you going to do it. I said, but what about them? He was like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But I know you got a job, but stop worrying about them. You got the job. Wow. I'm like, oh my God. So it's like, that didn't sit well, man. That's a sticky situation I, I could imagine, right? It killed relationships, John. It killed it. You know, money kills everything. So so imagine being dirt poor and we all sharing an extra large french fry and all of a sudden now you you got, you you got all the money. $2.5 yeah. million dollars and I still don't have nothing. So we all looking at you like, oh, come on, man, give me this. Buy me some gym shoes. Nah, man, everybody daddy. So it's like, oh. Yeah. So, you know, but but to be honest, that's why I still have my chops in this business, because when I had my money, I shared it with people that I came up with. 